used to think it was the finest organ I'd ever play, but I was wrong. I also tried very much to play like the man of the tower ballroom in Blackpool, Reginald Dixon. I thought that it had to be that style of playing before you got anywhere at all, until I heard a record of an American called Jesse Crawford. <laughs>
I often put records on and people will say to me, where do you dig up those records from? And I think to myself, well, why don't they like them? But of course, music to me, it, I think it's like food. You either like bananas or you hate them. And uh, this is the sort of thing that uh, crops up from time to time. You put a record on it, you think it's marvellous, and of course the listener just doesn't like it at all. I'm afraid I'm like uh, many of the organ fans. I like the American school of playing. I think probably uh, this makes it possible to like because they've got such magnificent theatre organs over there. And of course their recording is superb in most cases. And in particular, I like George Wright. I think he, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect cinema organist. He plays in an orchestral fashion. If a horn passage should come in, a horn passage comes in. And this is what I look for in cinema organ playing. And I think this is where the theatre organ scores above all other types of organs because it is orchestral. The electronic organ hasn't got any character. In other words, they churn out, say, a thousand Hammonds, a thousand Lowrys, and they're all coming off the same track, and they're all made the same way. They all contain the same number of transistors and so many loudspeakers. And this is where the pipe organ, of course, differs. You can get the wheeziest little pipe organ, but it's nevertheless got its own little characteristics. I think this is where it differs. And so, so many of these records are virtually pop organ records today. They're a little meaningless, many of them, unless we find someone with uh, a definite style, like a Harry Stoneham or a Brian Sharp or a Jerry Allen, and then, of course, there's something to talk about. I can turn around to the listener and say, did you hear how he finished the coda there, or did you hear how he brought the intro and how he used the flute with the slow manual attack, and I can bring up all the, the local chat in that the amateur organist is familiar with. I was greatly influenced by the American organists, as I said earlier in the program, that were over here in the very early 30s. And I spent a lot of time with people like uh, Don Baker. Uh, I particularly remember he'd just bought a, a brand new Ford car, which only cost £100 in those days. And he was tickled pink with this car that he could run from one Granada theatre to the other. And he took me around quite a bit. And of course, I listened to him rehearse, watched him, and obviously gained a lot of knowledge by watching and listening because as a young boy you pick up more than people do at my age. Well I was very lucky, I was in that uh, very sort of uh, early teens when the cinema organ was blowing out on nearly every super cinema on every street corner and of course there were quite a few Americans over here at that time. I can think of people like Hal Ramsey I can think of people like Lou White, I can think of people like uh, Don Baker, all over playing in this country from the States where the theatre organ had actually faded out. So they came along with this style which was completely different to what we were used to hearing in this country because, let's face it, the cinema organ came in, what, 26 to 28? And of course, all the organists that were appointed more or less came straight from the church because where could they have obtained their tuition. I used to buy American records of Jesse Crawford. And of course, he came over here about 1931. I heard him on the radio, but I, I wasn't fortunate enough to see him in the flesh. Uh, I talked to organ tuners who'd met him and tuned for him. And of course, I, I, I seem to be able to picture this man in my mind exactly what he said, how he spoken, because these chaps talked to me about him, you see. And I thought, well, this is the style that I'd like to play if ever I grow up and manage to play the theatre organ professionally. Thank you most kindly. Thank you most kindly, ladies and gentlemen. You're very, very kind to a very old man. The suit's borrowed, don't think it's mine. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you've really touched my heart to this evening. I didn't realise that people would still listen to an old-timer like myself. I mean that very sincerely. When I hear people play like me, I think to myself, it's time they packed in. And don't blame me tonight, blame Alan Ashton. He said, will you come along? And I said, no. He said, please come along. I said, no. He said, I've done you many a favour. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you most kindly. Good night and God bless. <laughs>